the top five rookies. Oh, let's talk quickly about Aiden O'Connell. Sorry. This thing's running long. I'm asking you all these questions. Um, so Aiden O'Connell did a much better job in, in round two for a bunch of different reasons. Um, managed, managed that, uh, that offense. Antonio Pierce is now two and zero as the interim head coach. The last head coach to go two and zero, Rich Basaccia, Raiders didn't get the job. So maybe we'll see if Mark Davis learns a lesson from that. But Aiden O'Connell's future, because we talk a lot of when we talk about these quarterbacks in this draft class, guys that can come in, be backups, spot starters, and have success. Aiden O'Connell feels like he has an opportunity to be that guy. Maybe not this year, but down the road, a guy who can be in the league seven, eight, nine years as a, a spot starter. As a spot starter, not as a yeah. full. 16 game starter because mm-hmm. most party makes good decisions. You know that he's limited from an athletic standpoint, you know, through the poor interception in the middle of the field, which he should have never thrown. But in order for him to have success, they need a very strong run game and a supporting cast around him and go out there and manage the game. But all of a sudden, since Antonio Pierce took over, you're seeing a resurgence for whatever reason of Josh Jacobs and, being able to run the ball, play in better defense, that will give a young quarterback at least a chance to have a chance. Uh, great touchdown catch by Michael Mayer. Good throw. That, yep. But great yep. catch by Mayer. Yep, in the end zone. Uh, also, he maybe not. He probably won't be a Hall of Famer, Aiden O'Connell. Hall of Fame mustache. He looked like Rick Spielman in the picture with you and your brother there at training camp. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Hall of Fame mustache. All right. Let's talk about our top five rookies from week 10, and we'll get through this. We'll try to get this in five minutes so we can get to the um, updated draft order, too, because Debo's got things to see in L.A., Rick. All right, let's start from – we'll go from the top. We just talked C.J. C.J.'s number one, and I don't think that's that's up for debate. Uh, number two, though, our guy getting more and more work. David Montgomery is back. He had a nice run down the sideline. Jameer Gibbs. 14 rushes, 77 yards, two touchdowns, three receptions for 35 yards. He's so incredibly uh, dynamic in the pass game as well. I think that you should have bet the over of that game. Um, you can't bet on the lines because your brother's there, but uh, hypothetically, that was a fun game to watch. I love Dan Campbell's decision, and our buddy Pete Prisco was angry about this, to go for it on fourth down, to control the clock. Oh, we argued about that in the green room. It was – I thought he's not coaching scared. Right. Know? Right. So – Pete's like, he was so anti going forward on that fourth and two. And here's what will happen with Pete, which is what I feel I realized that, okay, so you kick the field goal and then you give a minute and change to Justin Herbert, who has been, who was lights out in that game. They drive down and they win the game. And then Pete's excuses, well, the defense should have stopped him. Well, Dan Campbell took it out. Of, didn't even make that up for debate. So I love that part of him. But Jameer Gibbs, talk about his continued development, his incredible twitch, his hard running ability, all that he brings to this offense. Well, I want to uh, pull up something here okay. for you. I texted my brother when I was arguing with Pete after that game. <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, I had a great win. I said, uh, Chris said this. He says, Dan coaches with no fear. And I told Pete that. Then I got Pete on with Chris in the green room on the uh, speakerphone. Oh, God. How'd that go? Oh, uh, why do you always why do you always make me look bad in front of your brother? I said <laughs> <laughs> quit saying stupid stuff. Yeah. But Dan does. He coaches with no fear. And that's what you it, want. Yeah. And I think it was a gutsy call, but it was the right decision because it worked. But the way their defense was playing, if they got that fourth and two, I know Patterson. As their kicker, we had him in Minnesota. I've had every kicker in the NFL kicking right now in Minnesota. <laughs> so I know all of these guys personally. He is a very accurate kicker, but he doesn't have great legs, leg strength. So to get it closer, ensure the victory. And plus, if you make that, and I'm sure they discuss that, game's over because we can just run the clock down. Yes, sir. If you miss it, you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on a defense and giving the ball back to Justin Herbert. So that was throw in all the chips, coach with no fear, we can get this done. And when you have the the way that offense was playing and the way uh, Johnson was calling the game, yeah, uh, you, you, you trust your, your coaches, you trust your players to come up. And golf was having a great game. And, you know, Laporta's been good all year. So, you know, throwing it to a 
rookie tight end. Uh, it was a great call, you know, so, and it worked, but you know, us, what is it called? Pundits, pundits, whatever, what are we, when we sit here and behind a microphone? Pundits, pontificators. Yes. W would be saying the exact opposite if they ended up losing that game. That's the thing. Four, four and down. the great irony is that he did it against Brandon Staley, who takes a ton of criticism when he goes for it on fourth down and doesn't get it. I think they, it. Were, they were four or five on fourth downs that game. I think they three of three for uh, the Chargers, and I think four of five for Detroit. Yes. So eight or nine out of. I think they had a higher percentage converting fourth down than they did third down that game. That's exactly right. Um, quickly on Ben Johnson, the offensive coordinator, is going to get a ton of looks as a head coach this draft, this hiring cycle. I've forgotten this, but Joe Person for the Athletic mentioned this uh, recently. Uh, he withdrew his name from consideration from the Panthers job last cycle. And if you're a Panthers fan, you probably don't want to think about that, seeing how the choice offense is working, but just something to keep in mind. Yeah, and the one only thing I'll add to that is – so Miko Ryans pulled himself out before he took the Houston job the year mm. before because he didn't think he was ready. And I wow. think Ben Johnson's doing the same thing. I don't know if he was ready or felt that he was ready to be a head coach, but I think after the success they have this year that he'll feel that he's ready if someone wants to give him an opportunity. Yeah. Oh, by the way, quickly, um, Jared Goff was talking to Tra Tracy Wilson, the sideline reporter for the number one CBS crew after the game. And he said on national television when she asked him about that fourth down call, he goes, I don't know if I can say this on television, but Dan Campbell, he's ballsy. He's got some balls. Yeah. So I thought, I thought that was funny. Um, all right. Jameer Gibbs. Looks like Jameer Gibbs, Alabama to me. Do you have anything to add in terms of? No, the only thing it was, it was nice to see as a change up is that usually in earlier in the season, they would have brought David Montgomery in those uh, goal to go runs. And both of his touchdowns came in, uh, you know, when they were inside the five or inside the 10 yard line and they gave it to Gibbs instead of Montgomery, which maybe fantasy land people were disappointed in that decision. Fantasy land. But uh, they know now that they have a pretty good one, two combination with those two backs. Yeah. David Montgomery looked faster than I remember too. on that little burst down the sideline. So that, that's good. The, uh, Jameson block. Williams blocked down the field on that long run. Oh, that was him He's struggling as a receiver, but boy, it's like he kicked it into gear and he's like jogging. And then he took two guys out and one was Derwin James, as far as just getting enough to get in front of him to have Montgomery get it into the end zone on that run. All right. Good for all James in there. All right. Number three on my list, a guy we haven't talked about since I don't think since the, the draft process, we mentioned him in passing probably in the preseason, but Jaden Reed, Finally starting to put it together for the, the Green Bay Packers out of Michigan State. Five catches, 84 yards. Um, He's going he, to be the Randall Cobb. I'm hesitating because I'm thinking, do you think he has a chance to be better than Randall Cobb? Well, he's faster. Yeah. He got behind. Randall uh, Cobb was pretty good, though, in his heyday in Green Bay. He was Bay. good, he, for sure. Uh, got behind the coverage on an, uh, on an over, on a touchdown, a great throw by Jordan Love. Jordan Love has had very few moments where we could say great throw by Jordan Love, but he got that against the Steelers a few times. They still, of course, lost that game. Um, but used him in the screen game a lot, and then he was able to win down the field. Um, played in the slot. They would motion him around, lined up outside. So they're moving all over the place. And Christian Watson continues to be – not as consistent as I would like. Yeah, I didn't want to say that word. Maybe he's still his hamstring isn't 100. percent I don't know, but he needs to step up. But in the meantime, we're seeing more for Jaden Reed, and, and that's been fun to watch. Musgrave, who we have talked about before, had a few plays as well. The tight end uh, who was drafted in the second round as well. I agree. Number four, Bijan. Bijan's finally back on the field. Seems like I don't know if he hit a rookie wall. I don't even know if we're at the point in the conversation. He but hit a uh, Smith wall. Yeah, Arthur Smith, maybe that's a more a better, a more descript uh, apt description. I don't get that, but you know, I don't get a lot of things. I don't know why you wouldn't be playing Bijan more often, but he had 22 rushes for 95 yards. He did have a touchdown, one catch for 11. Um, he doesn't look to be as uh explosive, have the explosive opportunities he had early in the season. Maybe defenses are having eight guys in the line around the Get line. The man the He'll make his plays, just keep feeding the man the ball. I think that's it. Don't overthink it. I think you're right. Yeah. Because we saw the, the 
the flashes of him hitting the hold and then dragging people down the line of scrimmage. All right, Amazing. fair enough. Amazing. They actually gave him the ball at the five yard line, and the guy can actually run into the end zone because he's faster than everybody. Yeah, I know. I'm just. Uh, it seems like sometimes we try to we try to overthink things and, and complicate things for no reason. Bijan's a, a simple one. Um, it is frustrating that the offense has the players that they have in the skill positions, and they're not explosive. Part of that's the, the quarterback situation, but we'll talk about that at some other point. And finally, a fine young man we have yet to discuss out of Liberty, day three pick for the Patriots, the Patriots' best wide receiver on the roster. He was the twitchiest wide receiver on the roster when everyone was healthy back in training camp. Demario Douglas, six catches, 84 yards. Um that's a little Jaden Reed in this game. I think he's a little twitchier than Jaden Reed. Not as big. Um, I agree. And- but don't forget some of those yards. And I like him. I think he's the only guy that has any type of juice on the offense, regardless of position. Um, <laughs> but some of those were garbage yards when they uh, Indy went back all the way to the end zone two minutes before the half. And, you know, he right. ran for about 40 of them. But a uh, good little slot uh, makes him – he just needs to get stronger. Yeah, you see him when he gets wired up with the defenders, but he is the only guy that has juice on that offense. And again, that's a problem for an offense like that. That's a problem for an offense like Carolina. That's a problem for an offense like Tennessee. And it makes me wonder if we'll see a push towards draft drafting. You're not going to find this exact person, but this body type and uh, the sort of the the resume, like a Tank Dell type. Are we going to see smaller twitchier wide receivers who can get open, uh, see their draft stock? rise in terms of how many of these guys get drafted because they the, the the big lumbering wide receivers that struggle to get open don't help you i think that's that's already started to trend but i think when you see these guys that that will be uh those are great friday picks mm. I, don't, I think that's where you get these guys all right that's it for our top five cj jameer Jaden reed Bijan, and demario douglas